What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Lesser Athletes. My name is Chow, and today, like always, another interesting video for you here on the channel. Today is SmackDown review for uh, April nineteenth. I interesting SmackDown. Let's just say the least. Um, really want to see um, your guys' reactions and predictions to this. Um, but let's just get on with it because we have kind of a lot to talk about. Just some interesting things. First off, let's talk about the LA Knight versus AJ Styles match, which to start off the show kind of crazy to see that be something to you know just be the one match we quickly go into not a promo not nothing something i feel like we haven't seen in a long time for this new era something that uh has been going on but you know match right away la Knight versus aj styles which let's be honest here i think was pretty predictable when thinking about uh, who is going to win this match? Are they going to go with LA Knight like how WrestleMania was? Or are they going to go with AJ Styles who just lost? Who's going to be better for Cody Rhodes? Easily, I would pick AJ Styles. But it was a good way to end the match. You had AJ Styles, you know, poking the eye, being like a heel type of win where you don't really see the phenomenal forum coming. But, you know, AJ Styles and Cody Rhodes is coming to Backlash. And this is going to be a good, uh, a really good, honestly, match. And I do think that we're going to probably see um cody rhodes of course retain at backlash and we're also going to see a contract signing next week um but overall a good match up next we're going to be talking about the new tag tiles which of course go with the new thing where they're doing with the tag tiles making them look more professional and better than the look that they had which was god awful in my opinion um but it is kind of sick. I really like these logos. I thought originally it was going to be, you know, when you say WWE Tag Team Champions, I really thought it would be the WWE logo. Huge logo. Doesn't look whatever. But these are beautiful, perfect, given the old school look. It's just, it's just perfect. Now, this ultimately led to a four-way uh, tag team thing, which... At first coming in, I was like, we are getting the battle of mid, where, of course, when it comes to certain matches are going to be good because there's not high-tier profile names. And again, that does make the match way better. The match is amazing because they have a huge group of people with different type of archetypes that work well. You have Montez Ford, Tyler Bate, and Pete Dunne being the flyers. Same with even... And I, even even Angelo uh, was doing so well. There was like certain aspects of it that they all showed when they all were teaming up against AOP. Um, a little predictable. The ones I really thought were either going to be Profits or New Catch Republic because AOP is NXT. I don't think that they're going to make um, um, uh, technically uh, uh, De uh, Phantasma be the other ones to potentially win. It was it was just overall very good. You had the Tyler Bay almost spinning the twin. You had um, everyone going against AOP doing crazy flips with everybody. It it was just a great fatal four way. And when it comes to fatal four ways, the Street Profits they're they're him, dude. The match had no business of being that good. Truthfully, now let's talk about this new Solo Sokoa coming out of the car looking in fashion all black red little uh handkerchief a uh, chain on like is this the solo sokoa that we has been on a crazy losing streak all this time like it does not make sense he immediately comes out and just goes to paul Heyman and tells him we want kevin owens we need kevin owens where's kevin owens and they search they search they search they can't find kevin owens they keep looking they keep looking and finally we see kevin owens but of course, we see Kevin Owens with Tomatonga and how Wade Barry always says it. That's that's Tomatonga. I just it's just every time I hear Tomatonga, I think of literally Wade Barrett saying Tomatonga. Um, but it's just like they are trying to make Tomatonga look like that guy, like a dog. And the end of the day, him also them bringing out the bleeding, them bringing out the blading. It's just this this segment to me was kind of like iffy weird but they're trying to just enforce that tomatonga is that guy and trying to enforce that um you know even when we're in this new era this new whatever they're starting to go back to the bleeding the blood show that it's just just a weird time we're in also you cannot tell me that they are not trying to make tomatonga a dog when they got him literally crashing rental cars a rental car what was the point of crashing the rental car Overall, though, I'm, like, excited to see where this Bloodline story keeps growing and growing because 
The fact is, is that with Tommy Tonga in the bloodline, with Jacob Fatu signing, probably going to go to NXT with, um, I don't even think Zilla Fatu is even in the question. It's going to be a um, blood, old bloodline versus new bloodline later on in the future where, in my opinion, because Solo hasn't said, I'm the tribal chief, we're going to find out that The Rock is the tribal chief. Can someone please explain to me why we're getting Carlito versus Santo Escobar when Rey Mysterio, Dragon Lee, all these other people are in full gear tonight, coming out just to be an entourage? Why are we getting Carlito versus Santo Escobar part three? I get it. I get it. We're supposed to, later on in life, find out that Carlito was the one that entered Dragon Lee. But where was the heel turn if we're going to have that? Carlito, if this guy is going to be a heel with his hopefully old theme, we should see a Carlito with uh, that guy's WrestleMania moment. But instead, we're going to get a Carlito that's probably going to just keep fighting, keep whatever, and maybe at SummerSlam, maybe at a huge event we'll get it. Hopefully we'll get it. Maybe at Backlash even. I hope at Backlash so it's sooner rather than later. It just makes sense it'd be sooner rather than later. Carlito, man, I'm I, – and, he, and he, got, he got destroyed by Santos Escobar. He got destroyed by Santos Escobar. It was an okay match. But where was the heel turn? I was expecting it. When they first showed damage control for this whole Naomi versus uh, Bailey fight – I really thought that weird. It was kind of indicating that damage control was going to interfere with the fight and either screw over Bailey, and Bailey maybe overcomes it, or just they both lose. Whatever it might be, I don't know. Um, but then Jay Cargo comes out and they were about to get jaded. Um, but to have them sitting in the same box together, like next to each other, during the match, I was like. You're telling me these women are not about just shuffle right here? And the whole time I'm thinking during the regular match, we'll talk about that, that they're going to get intervened or whatever. But the the buildup they're doing with Jade Cargill, with Bianca Belair, with the Kabuki Warriors, to me, I would be shocked to not see them have a match at Backlash. Maybe there's going to be a contendership for that. And then later on we see that uh, they get the uh, tag team titles match there somewhere else. It would have to be at a, a PLE because... You can you cannot convince me that Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair would lose to the Kabuki Warriors. I'm sorry, but the aura, the the actual just in ring ability from them is just out of this world compared to the Kabuki Warriors. Granted, the Kabuki Warriors are definitely a great great uh, tag team, but just the absolute domination from them. And like, no offense to Bailey, but Naomi was busting Bailey's ass for most of this it felt like the beginning half before they went to commercial break was just it was just a pinfall fest it was just cover after cover after cover one two one two one two non non-stop and you could even hear the crowd boo for most of it and then they go back and they start fighting whatever they start doing their moves whatever Naomi shows her athleticism shows that she's Peak wrestling moves, showing that certain moves, a bulldog. We're seeing crazy moves from her. Naomi was whooping her ass. I'm sorry, but Naomi was... It, I honestly thought for a second, aren't they really about let like, Naomi win this and then something happens, whatever, with maybe some crazy thing that uh, helps Bailey out, whatever it could be. But uh, just... I really, it really made me want Naomi to win. And then out of nowhere, Tiffany Strand just comes out and stops the whole entire match. Which, did I expect this? They kept talking about Tiffany Strand a little bit. Not really. Did I, um, does it make sense? Yes. Does it suck? Yes. First Bailey uh, title defense and it comes to DQ. Just just sucks but tiffany strand tiffy time she's going to make her presence damage control loving it jade and uh bianca hating it but yeah it kind of makes sense had one of the prettiest moonsaults i have seen from tiffany strand um i'm really wondering to see what it is i think she's a big contender for money in the bank i could see her cash in on bailey truthfully um then maybe later on naomi wins it whatever it could be um but 
what a what a shock honest i really thought the whole time that it was going to be damage control moving in because they showed them in the box and then they didn't show them for a while or they didn't show jade and bianca so i really thought there was a chance that they were going to probably go you know maybe hey uh they just came out of nowhere and they have been the ones to dq the match but instead tiffany stratton and damage control was loving it and now like every week we are back to our uncle howdy like just hints and talking about all the uncle howdy things that were happening during the show so of course like always we're going to get another qr code with uh the tag team titles when triple h was walking out freaked me the hell out again somehow um but we need to look at the picture because what what is this like can you can you explain what this is can anyone explain what this is? I don't know what this is. My my literal best guess was this. I mean, I mean, let's be honest here. This looks like a Travis Scott promo with Nike. The only thing I could think of is that this is like a face of somebody, and the top is maybe like a bun, and it's like an edited pic of somebody outside, like Bo Dallas or even Alexa Bliss. Like I don't even know. I even saved the image's name trying to find what this is about, and it just says Strabizo. What what is a strabizo? Now, if you do zoom in, you can't see the words "I'm nobody" on it, which is, I I like I looked at it for a second, and my clicker, like my uh, mouse, said I could click on something, so I zoomed in, saw "I'm nobody," which again you can click. There's a link to an image that goes to I, a video and an image that goes to this. Here's the image, and it's another Play-Doh drawing that we see. I don't know that like the imagery for this could be something where the birds are showing the shadows entertaining people while others maybe are suffering carrying the weight of trying to entertain others with the crow I am little I'm literally reaching I am reaching I'm just trying to think of something that it could be for uh, because this is it is interesting imagery if you know anything about this let know let me know in the comments below the video that it had originally says i set them free out of miri clay open their eyes while you did nothing and then it showed some crazy coordinates and this is where i hit my dead spot on this when you go to the coordinates you go to some slovenian it was the slovenian and croatian uh cave which you can you can tell me what that means um there's some theories that i have seen some theories that i actually do believe um but the video but when they first show the coordinates i thought it'd just be a google maps thing or something crazy for example when they were talking about when bray first came back from his uh you know the extreme rules thing it was for the return of bray with the white bunny at the coordinates they had for the google maps um kind of crazy stuff but the coordinates Go to the cave, like I said. And there's some theories coming around where maybe the cave is talking about when Bray and Bo, aka when they had their like peacock documentary thing. It could be, you know, something that they did when, uh, right before they went to WWE, hint of, you know, a Bo and Bray type of thing. Another thing is if you go to the Wikipedia and you go looking at that cave, it's known for saving five people um, from that cave, emerging from that cave, living from that cave. Um, maybe five people in the Wyatt family. You'll have Alexa Bliss, uh, Rowan, Uncle Howdy, maybe Braun Strowman, uh, somebody else. I don't know. Potentially, this is just things I'm throwing out there. Um, but there was another theory I saw that said that the cave is known for being so dark that you need walking lamps to see another, um, see light and see anything at all, which could be a Uncle Howdy reference with the lamps. I really don't know. They also did something that during it, a uh, Firefly thing was showing up during a commercial break. Um, I But this was during a fight. They had another one of the weird screens and weird whatever coming to it. It was just a whole lot of things going on with this Uncle Howdy thing. And I'm very just interested to see where we go. Other than that, there really wasn't anything much for uh, the SmackDown. A two-hour SmackDown compared to a three-hour Raw, you're going to, of course, get a little less. But it was still a good SmackDown. I think it had definitely some interesting things with the storylines. I love the new titles. I love just everything that's been going on with WWE. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.